Well, thank you for joining us. We're in Sonoma at Sonoma State University. Uh, Michael Ezra is with us right now, and he is an associate professor of multicultural studies. Nice to see you, Michael. Thank you. We just find out we're both fight fans. That's it. At least we were. We were until boxing grew cold, let's yeah, say. Yeah, something but, changed all along the way. Yes. You know? Once upon a time, though, it was the great American sport. Yeah, you wrote a book about Muhammad Ali? Yes, I wrote a book about Muhammad Ali, uh, The Making of an Icon, uh -huh. kind of describing how Ali went from this polarizing, controversial figure, maybe the most beloved and hated figure simultaneously in the United States, to yeah. someone who's vanilla now. Yeah. Really, just non-controversial. Yeah, Everyone loves him. Yeah, but of course, I don't know how much his illness has, has affected him, though. I mean, well, that, you definitely don't want to be mean to the guy with Parkinson's, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, tie, tie Muhammad Ali into some of the multicultural studies you've been doing. How has that affected society in, in general, both black and white? Well, you know, Ali is kind of a good symbol to show people what the civil rights movement has become in American historical memory, the way people remember American history. It's kind of like the rough edges have been kind of sanded off, and people forget how controversial Ali was. And I see the civil rights movement as kind of the same thing. I mean, Martin Luther King, for example, in the first 10 years of his life as a public figure, every year he was in Time Magazine's poll of the top 10 most admired Americans. Makes the top 10 every year. Last three years of his life, he's off the list. And King was, you know, decried by politicians, editorials and newspapers like the New York Times, you know, said he had stepped way beyond what he was supposed to do. King was like something of a hated figure by large segments of America by the end of his life. We don't really recall that anymore. Ali's kind of the same way, I think. Yeah, yeah, and, and with Ali, it has faded away. I mean, those early years, I can remember the same thing you're talking about, where he was outspoken. He wasn't keeping in his place, you know. He was just a fighter. He shouldn't be speaking out on, on the draft, on America, on the war, and all the things that he spoke out on. Is this true in general to the society? I mean, people who are in, in public who are not involved in politics, but who are involved in things like boxing you know, or baseball or whatever. It depends on Especially how on their color, depending. It, well, there's something there. I mean, it depends on how you spin it. There's a lot of people who give speeches kind of very upset about lamenting that the Michael Jordans of the world, the LeBron James of the world, the Kobe Bryants of the world don't, they're apolitical, so it seems. And, you know, people look back to the Ali's, the Bill Russell's, the Jim Brown's, like, yeah. what has happened to the political black athletes, sort yeah. of. But if you take a closer look, there's other ways to spin it where you can still see the athletes as political. Like, so there was just a basketball strike. Now, right. people kind of are upset that these millionaires are asking for more money. But the people they're fighting with are the billionaires, you know, right. who are kind of taking more of a share than they deserve, according to the players at least. Yeah. Now, so I make X amount of money. If someone who makes one-tenth the amount of money said to me, I'm rich, therefore I shouldn't fight for what's mine, i tell them they were crazy. So I say the same thing with the basketball players, you know, they're just trying to get what they think is theirs. Yeah, but it's, I mean, the thing is, most of us would say, hey, he's making $10 million a year. That's enough, mm -hmm. you know. But he does have the right to want and ask for more money, whether he's being driven by whatever forces are behind this particular athlete, any athlete, right. you know, regardless of color. And, and I've like read things where people say the athletes are part of the so-called 99%. And I think to myself at first, wow, that's crazy. I mean, they're millionaires. They're in the 1%. Right. And then I think about it more, and this is just another labor versus management scuffle. It's just on a very, very high level. Yeah. But those kinds of issues come up all the time in the yeah. work world. Okay, and when you're teaching uh, in, in multicultural studies, and we're just about out of time here, these are the kind of things that must play into what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, like, Ali's convenient because it's a good way to gauge how people remember the past. And once you can see how people remember the past versus the actual facts of the past, then you can start a discussion on race relations today. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Michael, nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Michael Ezra has been our guest, and he is an associate professor of multicultural studies at Sonoma State University. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.